So hey guys, welcome back. We are finally at chapter four of Ruby Volume Four. Woo! -hoo! Because forget World of Remnant. Right. We don't do that. <laughs> forget. We don't do World of Remnant. We leave that up to Vic. We don't do that. All right. Here. Um, <laughs> we don't do that here. Um, I mean, it's not to say that the World of Remnant stuff hasn't been interesting. It's just I want to cover the uh, the actual episodes instead of like the behind the scenes stuff. Like, we've barely, like, we talked a little bit about Ruby Chibi, but, like, we've left it mostly alone and t focused on the episode. So that's where we're going with that. Um, the other thing that I want to say right now is, yes, we're going to talk about chapter, or we're going to talk about episode four. So if you haven't seen it, as of the time that we're recording this, it is Sunday. It is the day after it came out for Rooster Teeth first members. So if you have a Rooster Teeth account you can go and check it out for free. If we were doing a reaction video, I would post it up when it comes out on YouTube, but I think that we're covered for just talking about Ruby uh, like once it's free for all users. But it's, it's out sure. there. It's free for all users, uh, users? users on the Rooster Teeth website. So if you haven't checked this out, please go watch the episode and then come back and listen to our yes, thoughts and opinions please. on episode four. <laughs> And having been said, it's spoiler time! <gasps> Yay! Okay. Okay, I could not wait to talk about this because there was so much good so much. stuff that happened Too in this much. episode. And uh, there there was a lot of uh, character progression and uh, answers about characters that we barely touched on. Yes. Uh, so, first and foremost, uh, Raven hasn't... Or, not Raven. Yeah, Raven's in it, but we're not talking about her just yet. Uh... Yang has a nightmare yes. and wakes up from her nightmare and we get possibly the best moment that I've seen in all four seasons and that is the teachers gathered around drinking and telling stories about and I love days. that they're talking oh. about their days in the uh, back of the day and I love that they're basically shitting all over Crow. That's the best <laughs> thing. They, he, we never the, wanted to if kill you before. were going to take if you were going to take anything away from this episode, take Take away the fact that they got Crow to wear a skirt. <laughs> Done. I love that whole conversation because they're sitting there talking about, uh, uh, like putting him in a skirt and Ty Yang's like, but hey, the I got all the girls to say he had nice legs, so you know, got him out of his shell. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. And all I could think about was the the comment from Crow in the previous volume. Where he was, le where he was sitting there saying he walked into the tavern and he was immediately brought to his knees by the sheer length of the bar maiden's mini skirt, <laughs> like, and that's all I could think. I was like, now I want to have that entire scene play out again, but with Crow. I was brought to my knees all the women were brought the to their knees by the sheer of length of his mini skirt, Crow's mini skirt. Yes. <laughs> It was great, and at first I thought Yang was just gonna like walk away, or once she realized that she was noticed, she was gonna like run away. But no, Yang actually came in and sat down and everything, and you know everything was chill, and I, that was a good scene to have because it yeah. it showed that Yang was trying to push through all her fear. I and also like how they immediately possibly... got into landing strategies, <laughs> and they're like, yes. "You should have seen your dad." Yeah. So he's like, "Hey, hey, she's right here." <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh I I also love that there was mention about Ospin in that uh as well because you get you get a little bit of Ospin there and then we also get the uh the discussion of <laughs> we get the possible we get the biggest bombshell of the whole thing where Taiyang literally turns around and says to Yang did you lose brain cells along with your arm? Everyone I'm, dropped I'm their joking. glasses. <laughs> Everyone dropped their glasses. Jaws were hanging. I was one of the people with jaws hanging. I was like, okay, damn. Salvage okay, it. Salvage yeah, it. Salvage it. Bernie. I'm like, I'm like, I understand that Bernie is voicing Tai Yang, but I didn't think they were going to add church to this series because suddenly Tai Yang became church. And I'm like, damn, what an asshole. But like, she just was like, Pun you know, punches him, punched and him in like, the you arm. Jerk. Yeah. yeah. You jerk. And it was such a good like uh and, and I tweeted this at at Barbara because I mean if I mean there are so many people that I hope agree with me on this. <laughs> and I like that she liked it. That was all well and good, but like Barbara 
the emotional range that she had with Yang this episode was really great. And I love that, you know, they bring up fear and I, I can't remember his name right now. Um, the, the bigger teacher. Port. Peter Port. Port. Okay. Uh, he is afraid of mice. <laughs> Their tails are so hairless. It's unnatural. No, no, uh, uh, no, I bust out laughing so hard when he was like, they bring plague and vermin. I was like, oh my God, yes. They bring disease. <laughs> it was so spot on. This is a conversation that I can imagine myself and my friends having around a table while sharing drinks as well. Like, that was what really brought it home for me was like, this is something I could picture myself and my friends doing is something like this and then turn around and be like yeah the guy that's the biggest roughest toughest of all among us he's afraid of mice uh, i was like oh and they're like Argh! and i love that because that makes him the elephant uh, <laughs> that makes him the also that makes him as, the goliath in the room yeah I, I love that does that mean we could talk about the goliath in the room <laughs> uh uh but also i love the idea that because my mother is a teacher like for my entire life she's been a teacher and i love that they have the moment where the teachers are all sitting there drinking and, and the line is uh despite what uh despite what is commonly thought teachers do have outside a life of outside of the classroom <laughs> and that's so freaking true that is so freaking true um and then we move on to Oscar. Let's talk about Oscar a bit. I, I know I don't know if I'm going with the timeline correctly or not. You are, you are. They 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 sit down, they have uh, okay. the drinks, they talk, and then uh we get to meet Oscar. And this is to me, this is one of the best moments because it means that three of my theories were right. So Number so, one, so, Oscar is not actually important. He's relevant. Yeah, no. So that's one. Uh my my, my first guess was um because it because of it was immediately right after the spring maiden. My first guess was that Oscar is in some way related to the spring maiden. So that theory was disproven. So I'm a little disappointed about that. But it, it, we still have more volume four to see. But my theory was that Ozpin is still alive and that this kid is somehow related. And the fact that in this thing he's sitting there staring at the mirror. He's touching his hair. He's like he looks bewildered. But all we see is him. I'm thinking that Ozpin is what he's seeing in the mirror, and that is further reinforced when he says, when you just hear out of nowhere with Shannon McCormick, Hello, I'm Professor Ozpin, and this kid just barrels back, he just falls into all this fertilizer and stuff. I love it, because, uh, and, and when I went back and rewatched it a second time, and I got to that scene... I was pausing it a lot to see, like, what did he notice? What, what, why did he start messing with his hair? Like, you don't see anything in that mirror that's like, I was like, was there like a, an, it, like a, a, a small little hint or anything? I didn't see a freaking thing. So if they hid anything, they did a good job hiding it because I was going frame by frame through there trying to find what the frick was going on. And, uh, I did not find it. So. Uh, hats off to you, you fucking animators and doing a good job and like making me mine through stuff to try and find secret hidden gems that weren't even there or maybe are there. And I'm just too stupid to notice. I don't know, but I am upset and yelling for reasons because I am Michael J. Caboose and I hate babies. Oh, all right. Yeah. Then. Um, <laughs> but we get to know that he's at least if, if he isn't alive, he's at least in some way still around. Which reinforces the idea that, you know, there there's still hope. Whether or not he's alive or dead, Ospin's back. So that's the important thing that we took away from this. Also, um, the other thing that uh, I found out was, uh, you know, we found out who is voicing Oscar and Aaron Dismuke. Holy crap. That's really cool. Uh, for anime fans out there, that is the original Alphonse Elric. The OG so. Elric. Son. OG Elric. Yeah. Not not Brotherhood. Alchemist. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Aaron, if you're so, listening, uh, I got you to sign a Lego Boba Fett once. It was awesome. <laughs> and so Aaron, uh, really, really cool, is Oscar. And even though he didn't really have a lot of lines this time, it was, you know, we actually got to see something from him and get reactions from him as opposed to just watching Oscar farm, which was just kind of like, 
oh, well, that's neat. Who are you and why do we care? I also like the fact that... That was my initial thought process watching episode one of volume four for the first time. I was like, who are you and why should I care? All the, why, the why am too. I not, why am I not with my team? Yeah. Why do I not see Ruby? What is going on? I want answers, damn it. Why are you giving more and more questions? Uh, but uh, then in the credits, too, then, like, uh, the lady who calls for Oscar, <laughs> she just says Oscar's aunt. <laughs> oh, Oscar's yeah, aunt. Yeah, Oscar's aunt calls right. for Oscar. <laughs> All right. So the, the other thing that uh, we move to after this is we get back to Team Ruby a little bit, and they're talking about, you this know... This next town, which Ruby can't ever seem to pronounce the names of. <laughs> What was it, like Hinasai? Um, uh, Ruby doesn't town very well, apparently. R- Ruby cannot um, map. Tr- please try Ruby, again. Ruby cannot map. <laughs> please restart and try I again. I like that. <laughs> Ruby cannot map. Yeah. Now I want to have a Ruby... This this makes me want to have, like, a Ruby GPS. Lindsay, Lindsay, please make a Ruby GPS in which she gives you all the wrong directions. Turn left, I would find that maybe? <laughs> All right, I, I feel like I want to tweet that out now. <laughs> With the discussion in Volume 4, we realize Ruby can't map, which means, Lindsay, we need you to make a GPS that gives all the wrong directions. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's well, I mean, it's this. not we that can she can't it. map, it's that she doesn't know the names of anything. So I think it would just be like, you can try, it's like you can swing by the Austin Owl no, House. No, no, damn it. No, damn it. I, w- I like this idea that Ruby can't map. She needs to have something in common with Zoro from One Piece, <laughs> damn it. Uh. That's the running joke on One Piece. The reason why Zoro never dies is because they tell him to head towards the light, and then he walks in completely the opposite direction. <laughs> and that's how he's able to stay alive so uh. much. But I right. also like the fact that uh, we get to see Crow again. Crow's back. We get to see Crow again, and he's <laughs> the reason they have luck. not encountered Grimm. He is just <laughs> luck. And then we get to see them check into the hotel, and... Crow is in the tavern right across the street, keeping an eye on them. And, oh my god, okay, first off, that waitress that gave him his drink, super cute. Adorbs. Like, adorbs. Uh, and then, lo and behold, he got a drink sent from somebody. With I was thinking red it would... eyes, wink, wink. With red eyes, wink, wink. Turns out, it's Raven! That's so and Raven. I'm sorry, I'm on Crow's side on this whole thing. Yeah. Like, she is... She is, in the most sarcastic way possible, mom of the year. Oh my god, like, I love that, one of my favorite things about Crow is, he does not give any fucks. He will tear into you regardless of who you are. He, w- like, he went after Raven for abandoning savage. her family. straight savage. Like, he is savage. And I love that about him. Savage and, level uh, I mean, savage. You could tell that they're siblings because she gives him a lot of lip back as well. Like, does she, she, she have yeah. it? E. <laughs> but uh, the conversation at which we find out that she is the leader of a tribe of bandits. In fact, the tribe of bandits that are responsible for what happened in the previous town that Ruby Wait, is that and what happened? the crew went to. Is, hmm? it, is, that, is that disclosed? Back yeah, to back, that's back, what back was to the week. Gotta find it. <laughs> No, that was actually that was said in the episode. I know. I, I must have because he was, was talking was too about focused the on Raven. But no, uh, she was. She is the bandit group. I lead our tribe now. Attacked, Not you. yeah. That attacked the previous town that Ruby and uh, the previous village that Ruby and them went to, where the hunter died on them. And so, right after that, the Grim attacked, and of course, she was. She was saying we didn't think the Grim would attack so fast, and. Apparently, she was the one that told – she was Crow's informant about the events that happened in Volume 3. And so that was a big thing. I feel like we got a lot of information, a lot of character development, and we came out with even more questions. I, I also think that uh, people are right about Crow and Raven's semblances, the, the, the fact that they're twins, they share the sim- same semblance. Because when that Crow flies off in Volume 4, like when he's on the ledge and he sees it fly towards the town – like the look mm-hmm. on his face just lets me believe that they do in fact share the same semblance, mm. and that her portal also, thing is the, just like a. It might just be one of the properties of her katana. Also, I love that one of the first things that he does is literally he goes, "Did you know that Yang lost her arm?" Trick he question. Goes, and she starts trying to. Ch- he goes, "No, of course you freaking knew." 
and then you did nothing. And he was like, I saved her once. And he was yeah, like, that's yeah, that was Everybody it. Gets one, one time, mom of the year. Like, oh my god, like, Crow let her have it. And I was so happy that he did. I mean, she let him have it back a bit with abandoning the bandits and stuff, but he had legit points on that, too. He was like, they are killers and thieves. You thought I was going to stick around? No. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. And she's like, this is my family, not that. And I'm like, that's fucked up, yo. Strong uh, I'm waiting for the moment. I, I, I'm honestly, because of that entire discussion, I'm waiting for the moment where Tai Yang sees, sees Raven again. What is that going to be like? Bitch going to get bitch slapped. Is she going to get, is she going to get knocked the fuck out? Or is he going to be like, oh my God, I've missed you. Like, I want to know what that's going to be. I, it has to happen. It needs or is to happen. he just, or is he just going to go straight off on her verbally and be like, you know, I had to raise our daughter by myself. And Summer's daughter, thanks very much. And so, uh, is, but there's, okay, Summer's daughter is also Tai Yang's daughter. Though, Do right? we know that, though? They share the same Do dad. we know that, though? I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm, that's what I'm I, wondering. I, I will like, always, I will I'm always thinking, wholeheartedly support the theory that Crow is, in fact, Ruby's I'm thinking dad. that, that, that Crow is Ruby's what? dad. I support that theory. Oh, Uncle Crow is actually Daddy Dearest. Yeah, I support that, that theory. Then in that case, then in that case, that makes that entire conversation between Crow and Raven so much funnier now because they've both abandoned their kids. No, Crow's still following his. He's protecting his daughter. Uh, I mean, in a way, yes, but like, wasn't neither of them raised their kids? Maybe they just realized that Tai Yang was the only decent parent, and they were <laughs> like, "Yeah, Team Dad, we, we have to." Le- Team Dad, <laughs> Team Dad for the win. <laughs> so that's a that's actually a good one that I hadn't thought about actually. So the, yeah, the, the, the idea be, occurs to me, me, but it, I, I could I could be very wrong. You're just mad because he whipped butt. <laughs> like, oh my! I'm God. just saying, like people are like, oh yeah, no, Summer's hair is the same as Ruby's. It's black with red tints. I'm like, no, if you look closely, it's red. It's all red. <laughs> Summer's hair is all red. It's red with black tints. Yeah, on the edges. Um, but the other thing is, I thought that Summer actually, uh, the reason why I thought that, um, Tai Yang, uh, was actually Ruby's dad at one point was because, uh, it felt like Summer and Tai Yang got married. Like, they lived together. I mean, they could have, but, that, I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's worse complicated family situations in the world of Remnant. <laughs> that, that is true. But, um, I mean, it's just, it's just funny how close-knit the four of them were on their team that you know they kind of all stuck together with each other as adults as well even if raven did kind of break up but yeah i I love the dynamic between the four of them i'm like i wonder if this is how team ruby's gonna end up as adults i hope not i hope not (laughs) that'd be horrible but but yeah it'd be it'd be awesome so um what final thoughts do we have about ruby episode four and what what are you looking forward to in the next episode because yeah there's a lot going um, on um first off waitress is best girl that's that's my first thought <laughs> uh, i loved her reaction to raven when she like opened up i'm the out and just walked out. Ah, <laughs> drops the liquor <laughs> can you make I this love a double Crow's reaction he just turns around make this a double i'm like that's adorable that's adorable um if I, if I mean, finishing thoughts, I'm, I'm hoping that this journey that Ruby's actually undertaking gets to actually have a, some significance. Because right now, I mean, I, I, Crow gave them the hint, but right now it seems more <laughs> like they're just kind of trying to figure out what it is they're doing exactly, mm-hmm. while Crow's just kind of playing bodyguard in the background. <laughs> bodyguard. Background bodyguard. 2016. But I... I, I Final thoughts, I, I like the, the fact that at the end of this episode, Yang comes outside with the arm on, and she's ready to take her first steps forward towards actually yeah, improving. That, that is... That was... I mean... There were so many people that were thinking she wouldn't even put the arm on until the end of the... Yeah. Uh, until the end of the season because of the opening, and it had her, like, missing her arm in that final shot with all four of them back together. Yeah. But I I, I like that no she's, she's got her arm so speak it, it is very hard to take steps forward when it comes to healing or physical therapy because it's hard it it really is oh but yeah she's making good, great strides all things considered so I'm happy and 
I'm not. I wasn't excited. That the title of this episode was "Family," and yet we don't get to see any of Blake's family. Like that's what I was hoping for. I'm like Blake's family, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully next episode. Next so episode. hopefully next episode we'll get uh, we'll get to Menagerie and we'll get Blake and Son with Blake's family. That'll be. We better see why. Uh, also, something. Speaking of Son, real quick. Uh, something that I forgot to mention last episode was the journey to the East joke. Yes. That Son made. So. Uh, Son's middle name Goku confirmed. Yeah, for sure. Just saying, Son Goku Wukong. Uh, for people, for people that don't get that joke and only know Son Goku from Dragon Ball Z, uh, Son Goku is actually a character in Journey of the East, and his last name actually is Wukong. And there's a lot of Japanese uh, stories and anime and things like that that take that character from that character of Jer- from journey Naruto to the East. Even, if you haven't the, checked uh, it out four tales and naruto yeah. is called son goku and he's a giant ape yeah so it's it's not about dragon ball z it's about journey to the east uh if you journey want to, to watch a series that's kind of like oh journey to, yeah, the it's, west, it's journey to the west uh so so journey to the east is actually kind of a, a reverse joke yeah. i guess but uh journey to the west yeah the um the thing is, like, if you want to watch something that's similar to that, I would recommend watching Sayuki. That's probably the closest you'll get yeah. in animation yeah, form. Good. But uh, back to back to Volume Four. Uh, yeah, I, I like that this was back to back to see, uh, episode four. Yeah, this, it's this all episode volume four. had me on edge like the whole time. I was like, oh, "What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get?" Was... There was a lot of good character and plot development that went on this time. Yeah. So I hope we get more of that in the next episode with whatever characters show up next. More I, Oscar. I, I mean, we as, have to have more Oscar. I don't want another freaking. Uh, I I don't want a wife centric episode. So let's divvy it up and checkmate. Um, checkmate's next episode. Checkmate is next episode. So it actually might be. No, I mean, I it's want not to the see actual like, title. I'm just saying it has to be the next episode. We have to get that Weiss and Blake combo. We got we got oh, Ruby okay. and Yang. We got to have Weiss and Blake. Uh, so, so my other thing that I'm looking forward to, uh with any kind of character development with Weiss, I want her to get uh, get her summoning under control. Like, I want to see her summon, because that was one of the one of the really cool things that kind of made Weiss actually stand out and kind of step up last volume. I want to see her get more in control of that. And I'd also like to see her get out of the house and actually go and talk to Winter more. Like, I, w- I would like to see Weiss and Winter actually speaking quite a bit more. So, Olga Schnee, please I mean, make it happen. Oh, Disney. please make it happen. Uh, and we've already said what we want for Blake, but yeah, I, I, I'd like to see that. And if we get some moments of, uh, Tai Yang and, uh, and Yang fighting there, is his name Tai Yang and her name is actually, yeah, Yang. yeah. Which weird. It, it confuses me. Cause I think <laughs> Tai Yang and Yang. Okay. Tai Yang Yang. But yeah. Uh, if we get, if we get the two of them actually training, I'd like to see that as well. Uh, my only thing concerning Ruby, and this was why I was like, when I saw Crow at first, I was like, oh, oh, I wonder if like, like they they panned to that shot behind Crow and you saw the Grim for a minute. I thought we might have seen Tyrion. I want to see Tyrion uh, coming in and fighting Ruby and then Crow get in the middle of that. Like, that's what I want to see. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. You're All not allowed right. to be here. Get out. Yeah, yeah, I want to know what my other villains are doing besides just Cinder and Salem. Okay, I want more of my episode one. We villains. need more Hazel. I expect more Hazel. <laughs> I need more Tyrion. Just and we out. both more need more Watts. <laughs> we definitely need more Watts. All right, so that is it for us. Uh, if you want to check out all of the Ruby content, it is available on their YouTube channel, Rooster Teeth. Uh, you can go to their website, roosterteeth.com, and check out all their content and become a first member to Oldly Worth the Money so you can watch all the episodes as they come out. Uh, not just the Ruby stuff. There's a lot of other content that they put out. Like, Rooster Teeth is a huge community. And, um, you know, uh, if you'd like to help us out, you can send us to RTX. That'd be nice. Oh, for sure. Yes, please. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> I've, I've got plans this year, so if, if you guys want to help, you know, uh, money is good. 
All right, that well, you guys is. Have a hotel, uh, I'll, 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 I'll bunk down. If you want to check out, if you want to check out anything else that we do, uh, all of our social media for the Fairy Tale Podcast is in the description down below on both SoundCloud and YouTube, and you can get links to all of that and find the opposite one. Like if you're watching on YouTube and you want to check it out on SoundCloud, or if you're on SoundCloud and you want to check it out on YouTube. But as always. All of your comments are appreciated. We would like to talk with you. This is just the beginning of a conversation. It is not the end of one. So we would like to hear your thoughts and opinions on this as well. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Uh, what things did you like? What things did you not like from the episodes? We already know that people hate us, but we don't care. Yeah. Haters going to hate. Haters going to hate, and they can drink their haterade. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about this. So leave your comments in either the YouTube comment section or the soundcloud comment section and uh we may read them out on the next episode Indeed. uh so we'll see you guys again next week on sunday when i don't have to put together and upload four different ones of these all, all at the same time <laughs> it'll be so much easier with now that we've caught up that we only got to do one a week so much easier got schedule uh but yes i am not to from the fairy tale podcast i am here with walkman exe from ruby abridged uh, ruby abridged a ruby abridged as you like to call it the ruby abridged it is it will it be, will the, be ruby the, abridged. the ruby it will be <laughs> <laughs> all right that is it for us good night guys Bye.